I want to like to call the meeting to order. Um, uh, Mr. Wynn, would you please sure. deliver the invocation? Will do. Good morning. Let's Rice. bow our heads for prayers. Yes. Let's, let's stand, please. I want to like to call the meeting to order. Um, uh, Mr. Wynn, would you please like deliver off, the man. invocation? Good morning. Our heads for prayers. Ben, turn your mic off. All righty. Let us pray. Father, we ask your blessings to be on us this morning. Thank you for a beautiful day that you've given us here in Southwest Florida. And we ask you, God, that you would grant us your wisdom today, your insight as we look at the agenda before us. And uh, we pray your, your blessings on all that we do here. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let us remain standing while Mr. Gambrell leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Rossio. Here. Board Member Gambrell. Here. Board Member Benson. Here. Board Member Galloway. Here. Board Member Wynn. Here. Thank you. Board Member Waterhouse. Uh, the clerk, and she didn't notify me that she would be uh, unable to attend. Okay. Board, board Member Hershenson. Board Member Benson. Here. Board um, I understand that, that uh, Vice Chairman Hershenson is uh, available by Zoom, and in order for him to participate, uh, we ne he needs approval, so I would like to move the approval of Mr. Hershenson to uh, uh, attend this meeting virtually. All in favor? Give me a second. Do we, do we have a second? Second. Second. second? second. There we go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ben, welcome. Hello, Ben. <laughs> oh, keep your mic off, Ben. <laughs> Benjamin. Never mind. <laughs> All right, the next order of business is the approval of the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of August, 2023. Uh, I, I was not here, so I would have someone, please, uh, who was here to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. Gambrell makes a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Thank you. Mr. Hershenson, please turn your mic off until you need to speak. Um, as is our want, we will uh, uh, postpone the public comment until after the uh, uh, after the, the, the hearings. We have three cases today. First case is the tidal wave rezoning, a request to rezone portions of property uh, totaling approximately 4.1 acres from the light industrial district to the general commercial district. Mr. Uh, Chairman, as this, as this is a quasi-judicial uh, hearing, I'd like to swear everyone in at this time. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you to do that, yeah, okay. So I'll ask staff, any, any representatives or any members of the public who should speak today, sure. please stand, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So we are going to hear from the staff first. Yeah, he just wants to play with the remote first. Okay. Pardon me? Yeah, they, they were put in there. So I'm sorry for the delay. I have some technical difficulties. OK. OK. 
Okay, well. Hmm. Anybody have any jokes they want to tell or? <laughs> What do you call skydiving lawyers? Uh-oh. Derek, this is for you. Yeah, I know it is. I'm just going to sit quietly. <laughs> Skeet. <laughs> Being that this is Halloween, why does ghosts, why can't ghosts play musical instruments? They have no organs. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Being in the season, I mean, you know. <laughs> My 12-year-old told me that the other day, so. A frog walks into a bank. <laughs> Once alone, goes to talk to the loan officer whose name is Paddywhack. Paddywhack says, I'm sorry, I can't give you a loan. They said, well, let me talk to your boss. And the frog was into the boss. And after a while, the boss goes to the, uh, um, the uh, and um, uh, he asks him, well, what kind of collateral do you have? Um, well, I have, uh, I have this uh, little statue. Huh? No, do, do you have it on you? Yeah. I think so, uh, and and the, the boss looks at him and says, hey, Paddywhack, um, uh, let me get this straight. <laughs> Is a knickknack. Yeah, that's it. Paddywhack. It's a knickknack. Give the frog a loan. Ah. I screwed it up, but I mean, it's, it's probably the worst joke of all time. I mean, this went out over the air. Viewership, that's for sure. This has gone out over the air. Yeah, it's being right. recorded. That's right. It is recorded. You can tell why we're not stand up comedians. We, yeah. we do this. <laughs> it might go viral. <laughs> and then we'll all be embarrassed. So now everybody knows how to, how to do it. <coughs> oh, well, that's progress. Hmm. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Mike Fegon with Community Development for the Record. And uh, the first case is about a rezoning of uh, portions of 4.1 acres of property located on the corner of US 41 and Production Circle. Um, quick housekeeping item, the, uh, the, the applicant and their agent uh, yesterday late in the afternoon had a little bit of a development that occurred, so they're unable to be here in person today, unfortunately. Um, but we do have one of the agents and engineers for the project uh, participating on the phone, Mr. Craig Bousseau. So if you have any questions regarding uh, anything that the applicant may need to answer, he'll be the, the go-to for you for that. But I'm here to give the staff uh, perspective on this rezoning and then the corresponding special exception that also is part of this process. So with that. So the staff review team, a little bit more narrowly scoped than probably what you're used to seeing. I'm not sure if this board has seen a conventional rezone uh, before. Most of the rezonings that you've seen have been planned development, so they're a bit more uh, intense in nature. When it comes to a conventional rezone, there aren't any conditions of approval because you're wanting to rezone into a category that's already existing and regulated in the code. So the review is a little bit different than it is if it were a planned development or a custom made rezoning. So for this one, we just had planning and then the surveyor and principal planner doing the bulk of the review for this particular case. And again, the request is to rezone portions of 4.1 acres of land uh, from the light industrial zoning designation to the uh, general commercial or CG zoning designation. And staff is recommending approval of the request. As far as the location, uh, like I said before, we are on the corner of Production Circle and US 41. You can see the outlines of the property there, and I put stars on the two major pieces. Um, 
And I also have on that map a depiction of the surrounding zoning designations immediately surrounding the property. And as you can see, they do have the zoning designation that they're requesting just to the south. Uh, there's also additional commercial development on the west side of 41. There's also industrial to the east and to the north of this property. So they're, they're in a commercial industrial corridor overall. So originally this property was three separate lots. It was known as lots one, two, and three of the Bonita Industrial Park edition, as you can see in the snippet of the boundary sketch there. And when you look at the zoning layer, it's, it's, it's a little odd. Uh, you can see there are portions of the properties that are already in the CG, General Commercial Zoning Designation, and there are also portions that are not within the uh, CG zoning designation and that are still within the light industrial designation. So the request of the applicant is to place all property in the CG designation. So from what we could tell based on the history of the property, um, it was rezoned from agricultural to industrial use back in 1971, approved by Lee County. And it was rezoned again in 1985 to CG, but the CG didn't encompass all of the property. Um, it's a little unclear as to why that would be the case as far as the research the staff was able to conduct. Uh, so there was no concrete reason as to why only portions of it were in CG. What we were able to determine was that at one time the northern portion of the property, the property that's immediately on the corner of US 41 and Production Circle, there was plans or intent, should I say, for there to be a car dealership on that northern portion. And that was one of the reasons for the rezoning back in 1985. The plans never came to fruition. Uh, the property was never developed. So the applicant uh, realizes that there's a discrepancy in the zoning. So they file the necessary paperwork and applications to request that the entirety of the property be placed into the general commercial zoning district. And as far as the standards for the general commercial zoning district, uh, the lots in question, there, there aren't any concerns as far as the sizes, as you can see on the screen there, and also in attachment A uh, to your staff report. You have lot width, depth, and area requirements for the CG district. The lot has to be at least 100 feet wide, at least 100 feet deep, and at least uh, 20,000 square feet in area. And you can see that, that the provided lots that they're showing far exceed uh, those requirements for the size. So there are no conflicts as far as rezoning to that district for meeting the size requirements of the CG district. And the other thing to keep in mind is, like I said, that you know the, the CG use, it's already on the property. It's just not on all of the property. So it's not that they're asking for a completely new zoning designation. Um, even if they were, I don't think there's much of a concern with it because there are CG uses in the area. Again, the property to the south is zoned CG. There's property on the west side of US 41 that's zoned commercial. It's in a commercial plan development. Um, and what we did show you here were some of the uses that were permitted in the CG zoning designation. And again, these are uses that would already be permitted on most of the properties in question, just not all of it because of that odd layout of the zoning layer. Um, the ones that are in bold are the uses that would require a special exception. Um, there is a companion application that, that follows this uh, for that. Um, but overall, we didn't see that there were any concerns with the request to go from uh, the small portion that's still zoned industrial to commercial over the, the whole site. One other thing that we did look at, though, of course, is the comprehensive plan and making sure that there were no issues with rezoning based on the requirements of the comp plan. So the properties are in the general commercial future land use category, and they're requesting a general commercial zoning district. Uh, so it seems to make sense. There are no environmental resources or sensitivities that are on site. Uh, none were observed, and staff did go out there and do a walk of the site to confirm what the applicant had told staff about the environment. Uh, there are fully constructed roadways. It borders 41 Production Circle and Production Boulevard. So it has roadways on three sides that are fully constructed with suitable infrastructure and access to the property. And the remaining comp plan elements, such as housing, intergovernmental coordination, coastal elements, those areas don't apply. Uh, they're not applicable to this particular request. 
So with that, you have the approval criteria for conventional rezones, and again, conventional rezones being a bit different than the more lengthy, intense plan development rezones that you're used to seeing. They're relatively basic. Um, you know, yes, they, they do have access. Uh, they don't violate the comp plan. They're consistent with the densities and intensities that are in the surrounding area. Um, the uses that are afforded in the CEG are uses that are also compatible with the surrounding area. So staff didn't see any concerns with, uh, with the request overall. Also keeping in mind that the property is located within the US 41 overlay. So there are a plethora of uses that if they were to be uh, requested or wanted to be developed on those properties that they would have to likely come before you for a special exception. And then there's also specific development and design standards for the overlay itself. So with all those things governing these properties, staff didn't see uh, any concerns with the request to rezone the rest of the property into the CG district. Again, it's a zoning designation that's already on the property, it's just not on all of it. So their request to keep it nice and clean is to put it on the entirety of the properties. So staff does recommend approval of the rezoning request from the light industrial to the general commercial zoning designation. And, and with that, if you have any questions of me, or like I said, we have Craig representing the applicant on the phone. Questions? Real, real quick one. Lots one, two, and three. Yes, they're all owned by OLP Wash Partners. So yes, a, a, as of right now, yes, they are. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they're not. Um, so there was a little bit of a lot reconfiguration that occurred, as you can see. So in the original plat, where you have the three lots, lots one, two, and three as separate lots, and then you that's what it is now. It's just two lots. So. This lot here in the middle is the one that is owned by OLP Wash Partners. In your application, though, you did see a, a signature from Bonita Corners LLC, which is the applicant owner of this lot, for the rezoning of their chunk as well. So again, it is a request for everything within the yellow to be zoned CG. By two different owners. Correct. And skipping ahead just a little bit, because I know we're going to be looking at this property on the next special exception what's the difference in that owner this property ownership and the ownership of tidal wave car wash no no ownership difference overall uh, it's the same entity and that's going to be just on this piece here the car wash that we'll be discussing later it's just going to be on this piece thank you understood any other questions no. uh, i will entertain a motion to approve the uh, i make that motion zone Somebody make a motion, please? Yeah. Yes, I make the motion. This is Ben. I make the motion. Oh, Ben, to... hi. <laughs> I didn't hear you. G second. Gambrell seconds. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. You want to pose? Pose? Oh, don't, oh, it was unanimous. Okay. Second case, tidal wave special exemption. A special exemption request to allow a car wash facility I'm properly located within the US 41 corridor overlay pursuant to land development code 4 898. Mr. Figon will also present the case. I will, Thank yes. You. Good morning again. Mike Figon with Community Development for the Record. Uh, so, this is a request for a car wash on property that has just been newly designated as a uh, general commercial um, within the US 41 overlay. Uh, so the staff review team on this one a little bit a little bit greater than what you just saw in the previous application because we do have a specific special exception request before you for a car wash. So we put the application through its paces like we normally do. Planning, bike pad, environmental, surveying, engineering, uh, traffic review, which included city traffic review and review from FDOT as well. Uh, and then city architect were all involved in the review of this particular application. So again, as we sort of just discussed, property is located on the corner of US 41 and Production Circle. This is more of the interior property, though, located here, 24661, I believe is the address, uh, South Tamiami Trail. And this is the proposed location for a car wash facility. Again, as you can see on this map, uh, it is located in a commercial corridor with commercial uses and industrial uses essentially on all sides. 
So what we know about this property, um, again, this property was just subject to the previous case that you just heard about the rezoning request to go from IL, light industrial, to general commercial. Um, car washes are one of the uses that if they're in the general commercial zoning district and located within the US 41 overlay, that it requires a special exception. So they file the necessary applications to bring this before you to request that special exception. Mike, could yes, you sir. Explain that a little bit. Why a particular car wash would require a special exemption, whereas something else wouldn't. Just for my edification. Sure. So within the U.S. 41 overlay, somewhat similar to the Beach Road corridor, you have a desire to uh, try and accommodate a a mix of development types within your corridor. So. Uh, anything that is specifically auto-centric or auto-heavy in terms of use requires an additional level of review um, because the goal is to try and make thing, everything more walkable, bikeable, things of that nature. So if it's really auto-centric, they want that extra layer of review if it's going to be in your corridor. Thank you very much for that explanation. You're welcome. So they did file the necessary application uh, to go ahead and request uh, this car wash use. So this is a rendering that was provided by the applicant at staff's request just to give an idea of what it could look like if the site were to be developed with uh, their proposed car wash plan. So th again, this is, this is not a final architectural rendering. It's not a final detailed drawing. It's just meant to give you an idea. It's for illustrative purposes uh, to give you an idea of how the property could be laid out. So you see, for an example, uh, the landscaping that abuts uh, the building to US 41 that provides a fair amount of screening of the structure itself from US 41 at staff's request. You have uh, the parking and the vacuum stations that are located more towards the center of the site as opposed to being highly visible from that US 41 corridor. You also have the tunnel that runs parallel to US 41 instead of perpendicular so that you're not put in a position that if you're a passerby or you're driving by, that you're essentially looking down the barrel of a car wash tunnel where you see all the mechanical uh, nuances and the guts, if you will, of the equipment. So it's running parallel instead, which all sort of uh, comes in line with trying to be smart with the development when you're in a corridor and, and protect the view sheds, provide adequate screening, buffering, so on and so forth. Define tunnel, please. The, the tunnel is going to be this long building here where the cars go in to get washed. So it's not underground, it's a building. It's the, build, it's the car wash tunnel, yes. It's the tunnel that you, the car goes through, yes. So this is the more technical version of the site plan that you just saw the rendering of on the previous slide. Uh, so again, you see the, the, the car wash tunnel building parallel to 41 here. You have the vacuum stations and parking more towards the center of the site. You also have a drainage pond that is also going to be located on the property. Uh, the requirement for drainage ponds in the US 41 corridor is that if you do have one, that they need to be uh, fully landscaped, complete with littoral plantings to prevent erosion and so on and so forth. They are proposing all of those items, which you'll see on the uh, conceptual landscape plan on the next slide. The other thing that they're providing here is they are providing sidewalk access that runs all the way from Production Circle to US 41. So they are providing a connection point that does not exist currently. Also in line with the US 41 overlay, they are providing an area for respite for bicycles and pedestrians. So right here on this northwest corner near the sidewalk connection to 41, there's going to be a pergola, a bench, a bike rack. So they're they're doing what they're supposed to do in terms of trying to deal with the purely auto-centric nature of the use, but still provide for those other means as required by the US 41 overlay. And on the landscape plan, and again, this is more of a, a conceptual landscape plan overall. Uh, this has not been finalized or approved by a development order in any way, shape, or form, but this is just an idea of how they're going to be landscaping the site. You see they have a 25-foot wide buffer along the US 41 right-of-way and the car wash building. This is the landscaping all around the lake that we talked about uh, that they would need to do. 
and they're also showing a buffer on the north side, which currently abuts a vacant piece of property, and the south side as well, which abuts an existing commercial building. We also uh, requested that they provide a line of sight exhibits just so we can get a better feel for the, the elevation differences in terms of the sidewalk, the abutting roadways, uh, the property here, uh, the types of landscaping that are being proposed to really see if it could be uh, uh, provide that adequate screening and buffering. And then again, just to get a better understanding of the built environment overall as far as what's out there existing versus what's being proposed. You have the full scope of the line of sight exhibits that were pr uh, provided to you in your backup online. Um, so this is just a quick little snapshot of some of those. As far as the comprehensive plan consistency, similar to the previous rezone, we went ahead and uh, looked at this use for consistency with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the future land use category of the property is general commercial. The requested use is commercial in nature, so there's no conflict there. As far as the traffic element goes, you do have the full traffic impact statement in your application backup that was provided to you in the online link. Um, similar to a, a previous car wash that you looked at not too long ago, uh, it is not a project of significant impact, meaning that, that it will not account for more than 2% of the overall traffic volume on the surrounding roadways. So we didn't see a conflict with that aspect of it as well. Neither did FDOT. Again, Florida Department of Transportation looked at this request as well. They reviewed the TIS. They didn't see anything on there that was going to trigger any type of intersection improvements or turn lanes or additional stoplights. So again, not, not a project of significant impact in terms of traffic volume. Uh, the project does front fully constructed roadways. It is proposing to have its access points off of Production Circle. It is providing those sidewalk connections that we showed you on the site plan earlier. So it is consistent with the traffic element of the city's comprehensive plan. And with that, the remaining elements, intergovernmental coordination, housing, things of that nature, don't really apply to this particular case. So with the applicable elements, we did not see any issues with the uh, request with the comprehensive plan. But since this is in the US 41 overlay, uh, you do have a variety of approval criteria for any special exceptions that are going to be placed within your overlay. And what staff did in your staff report uh, is we went over each of these criteria one by one and provided the staff analysis of each of these uh, criteria and whether or not staff thought that the request met, successfully met the criteria that was provided. So with that, we have the first three here. Uh, the first one is consistency with protecting and enhancing the view sheds uh, along US 41. So again, we talked about the, the landscaping that they're proposing and also the landscaping that was going to be required regardless uh, to help protect some of those uh, view sheds and screen the building and the brunt of what's going to be closest to US 41. That's where the focal point of the, the screening is going to be. But you also have a view shed as well, and a view shed is a popular way of drawing a passerby's eye to your development. So you can do that through signage, you can do that through certain gaps in some of the landscaping. So they'd be like, what, 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 what is that's happening on that side? So there's a, an artful way to sort of deal with the, the view shed area as well. They are proposing a sign on the, I believe it is the southwest corner of the property that lets people know that there is going to be a car wash on site. Um, and, and again, we're, we're, the landscape plan that you saw is not the final plan, so we're still working with them on some of the, the actual uh, size of the trees, the specific locations, the buffering standard, where some spacing may be able to occur to help promote that view shed along US 41. We're still going to be working with them on that in the development order phase. Uh, but this is a, a good representation of what they're proposing. And then also your second criteria is about uh, building and site design standards to address some of the visual impacts. So some of the ways that that was done was, again, uh, running the tunnel parallel to US 41 instead of perpendicular. So you lessen the ability to see the mechanical guts of the structure itself. And instead, you're going to be seeing, if you are going to be seeing anything, an architectural facade 
uh, that, that, that's on that side of the landscaping. Uh, we also have the, the stacking of vehicles for entry into the car wash that's going to be perpendicular to US 41 instead of parallel. So you're not going to be seeing a stack of cars as you drive by uh, on the site. Um, the parking and the vacuum stations being behind the building further away from US 41. Uh, there's also provision for a cross access easement that should the property to the north get developed that they can share access points and have an access that leads you from one site to the other. So these are all some of the innovative techniques that were used to help address some of the visual impacts uh, of a project like this. Uh, your third criteria is to strike a balance between an auto or an auto oriented design and pedestrian access. And Again, it is a car wash, so at the end of the day, it's auto-oriented in nature. There's not really too much we can do about that aspect of it. But what we can control is whether or not they provide those other components. And they have provided those other components. You saw on the site plan the sidewalk that's going to run from Production Circle all the way through the property to US 41. Those are connection points that don't exist right now, so the applicant's going to be constructing those points. You also saw the amenity zone that was in the northwest corner of the property where you have the pergola and the bike rack and the bench that can be used by anybody uh, biking by or walking by. So we do feel that they adequately addressed uh, that particular criteria. Michael, one question. Sure. If, if this were not a request for a special exemption, they wouldn't have to do all this pedestrian and everything. It's only because... It's auto-oriented, is that correct? We would make them do it anyway. You would? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a requirement in the US 41 overlay. Ah. Mm -hmm. so, so it's one of those things where you have to demonstrate that you're going to meet those requirements as part of this request. Regardless of the type of business? Yes. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. So the next criteria has to do with exceptional or extraordinary conditions uh, that warrant the use separation of at least 500 feet and a demonstrated market demand for the use. So there are no car washes within 500 feet of this proposed project. The closest one is 800 feet. It's on the opposite side of US 41, excuse me, a little bit further to the north. The closest car wash that's on the same side of the road is four, mi four miles south. Uh, so they far exceed that 500 foot requirement uh, that's in your code there. Uh, and as far as market demand, what we can tell you from the staff side is that between 2022 and today, so within the last year, we've had four separate requests for car wash uses. Prior to then, such as 2021 or 2020, we didn't have any. Um, so we are seeing an uptick in the request for this style of use. And we assume, and as is the applicant's position, that that's a response to market demand for these uses. Four miles south, is that the one we approved on Bonita Beach Road. Bonita no. Beach Road in Terry? No, 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 that's the one that's down by the Dunkin' Donuts. Correct. It's a little bit south of, of, of uh, Bonita Beach Road. What's Correct. The, what's the one we just approved in the Circle K or something in the Publix parking lot? In the Publix parking lot. Oh, okay, so that was, that was one. It's, it was reopening an existing. Yeah, that was one that was on Terry Street. That was called Level Wash. That was an existing tunnel that just wanted to reopen. And that's four miles away? No, no, the closest one on that side of the road along US 41, so on that same US 41 stretch, is four miles south, just south of Beach Road. So the one that's reopening at Circle K isn't considered? Is on Terry Street. Isn't on 41. Got it. Yes. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't want to be, but I, exceptional or extraordinary conditions Demand for car washes, I guess that's in, up to interpretation, is it not? I suppose it could be. Yeah. Uh, we just, and, and again, we're not saying for sure that that is the standard, but what we are saying is that in the last year alone, we've had a 200% increase in the number of requests than we had the previous two years. The other surprise, in my opinion, is that no objection from Bonita Bubbles? No objection from Bonita Bubbles. Amazing, isn't it? I would think that's partly because they're on the opposite side of the road, so they're they're hitting traffic. You know, you, the odds are if you're traveling. And this one is not as a full service car wash as is Benita Bubbles. I 
This is the one where you sit in the car and you go through by yourself. Yeah, this this one, you're, yeah, correct. You're going to go through it, and then there's going to be separate vacuum areas and things vacuum. like that, so it's not necessarily. I, I should understand. Right. Similar to uh, the one by uh, Home Depot. And yes. yes. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. Right. This is kind of the concept. This correct. Thing. Correct. Okay. So that's all I had. <laughs> So the next criteria is whether or not the use will be injurious to the neighborhood or detrimental to the public welfare. It's, it's in a commercial corridor. It has a commercial future land use. Um, the use is commercial in nature, so we don't see any conflict on that side of it. As far as the surrounding neighborhood per se, the closest residential neighborhood would be Leisure Time RV Park which is on the west side of 41, so it's on the opposite side of 41 from this project. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a built RV park that's been there for over 40 years. It has a solid eight foot concrete privacy wall that abuts the 41 right of way. And it also directly abuts an existing commercial plan development on its south side. So we didn't see uh, a use that was gonna be on the opposite side of 41, heavily screened and landscaped with a car wash as being injurious to that particular neighborhood. Your next set of criteria, six, seven, and eight, uh, criteria, oh, oh, yes. Excuse me for a minute. Sure. Uh, on, on the case one presentation, yes, it sir. shows to the east of the lot housing, I guess it is, is it not? Yeah, it shows an RV park there as well. That's an RV park. Yeah, believe it or not, though, the Leisure Time Park on the west side, that's closer. It's closer. That's actually closer, yeah, which is why I called that one out specifically. But yes, you are correct. On the east side as well, there is another RV park that abuts uh, white industrial property uh, that has an application in right now for a storage so facility. there's no issue there. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, You're welcome. Say that storage, what'd you just say about storage facility? Yeah, so that, um, let me get, I'll go ahead and go back to the aerial here. It was in relation to the chairman's question about the uh, RV park that is on the east side of the property. Yep. So this, this space right here, uh, there's an application in for a storage facility right now. That's, that's all I was citing. And, and that's what's immediately adjacent to the the RV park here, and that this RV park leisure time, when you measure, is closer to the car wash facility than this one was. So we're going to be looking at the storage facility application in the future? No, that, that's already zoned that's already light industrial. Allowed. That's not within the US 41 overlay. They have rights for that facility now. That does not come back before you. And storage facility is rent a garage? Essentially mini warehousing, um, I, there's, but there's also allowances in that zone for more intense storage if you want to do like RV or boat storage as well. Okay. Again, as long as it's screened properly and, and all those things are taken into account, you can do those uses by right. And again, this, this is a different zoning district. This is, this is light industrial property. We're talking about commercial property, which is a little bit different. And when you say RV and boat storage, that's open storage? Open storage or perhaps there's an overhead but it's open on the other two sides, something along those lines. Okay, thank you. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so um, criteria six has to do with compatibility with existing or planned uses. So again, we're in a commercial corridor. Uh, you have commercial or industrial zoning on all sides of this property, and you have commercial or industrial uses, either existing uh, or able to be proposed on all sides of this property. So a car wash is not in conflict with other commercial or industrial uses that would be permitted along that corridor in that area. Your seventh criteria is whether or not the uh, project will cause damage, hazard, or nuisance to persons or property. So there's a few different ways that we as staff can, can analyze that. One of the things that we look at is we have, we have a section in the code uh, that requires certain uses to be set back specific distances from residential areas. And this could be anything from a 100 foot setback to a 500 foot setback or even greater in some instances depending on what's being proposed, if it's 
deemed hazardous or if, if it's a specific nuisance, they need to be further away from residential areas. Car washes are not on that list, so they're not subject to any type of special setback regulations overall. So keeping that in mind, along with the fact that there's gonna be adequate buffering and screening, they're gonna be maintaining and controlling and treating their own stormwater, they're providing cross access easements, they're providing bicycle pedestrian compliance and access and sidewalk connections. They're also gonna be governed and controlled by the noise control ordinance of the city. So with all those items in place, uh, it is the staff opinion that the use would not cause damage, hazard, or nuisance to persons or property either on site or off. Uh, the other use, I'm sorry, the other criteria is uh, if the project will protect uh, environmentally critical areas or natural resources. That was a simple one. There are none on site in either instance, so no conflict there. And then your final two criteria, nine and 10. Uh, criteria nine is consistency with the comprehensive plan, which we discussed on previous slides. Uh, it's in the general commercial future land use category according to the Bina Springs comprehensive plan. We already went over the traffic element of the plan and how we feel that it meets uh, how it is consistent with that element of the plan, so no issues on that. And then in compliance, I'm sorry, your 10th criteria, being in compliance with the zoning provisions, supplemental regulations, performance standards, et cetera, et cetera. There are no deviations or variances that are being requested, uh, so it's gonna be governed by the US 41 overlay development standards, your chapter four development standards, chapter three for engineering, stormwater, drainage, landscaping, the whole deal. The, the project needs to comply with the LDC, and that's that. Uh, no variances are being granted, no deviations are being requested. So with that, uh, we feel that it met the 10 criteria standards for recommendation of approval uh, for this particular site. And with that, we do have some conditions in place. The big one being that if approved, this would be valid for this applicant and this application only. So if somebody else wants to come in for a car wash on this site, change the plan, anything like that, they're gonna have to go through that process again. So it's valid for this specific application and this applicant only on this site. And it needs to be generally consistent with the site plan, landscape plan, and architectural renderings that are before you. We wanna see the general consistency with that. Yes, sir. Well, Michael, you're telling me that if the ownership of the company operating this thing changes, they have to come back and and reapply. Yes. Any particular reason, may I ask? So what, what we have, there's a, well, there's a couple of different reasons that for something like that, probably the, the, the biggest thing is um, if we see that there is a, anytime you have new ownership, you open it up to new ideas. Very rarely are you in a situation where you sell a project or a piece of property and they're gonna go ahead and build it that way. So this is an additional level of assurance that you're getting what you're seeing in front of you because it's going to be that owner that's gonna be constructing the project. Aesthetically and Correct. everything else. But after it's built and operating, change of ownership doesn't require coming back. Correct. Yeah, once it's already built and established and running and, and built to the requirements that have been approved, sure. I'm sorry, I misunderstood then. Okay, so it's only within the planning or pre-approval stage. Yes, that, uh, okay. correct. Uh, the second require, <laughs> the second uh, condition of approval is that, you know, that the noise control ordinance remain in full force and effect. We're not really seeing too many noise control issues coming out of this one. It's not like the one you saw a few months ago where there was a particular development that was abutting uh, a residential area immediately to its north but we did wanna have that in there as a requirement regardless that these uses are governed by the noise control ordinance and they need to meet those requirements. Um, any additional changes that are being proposed would require additional approvals and that if this special exception were to be granted, this does not guarantee that they're gonna get their engineering permits or their building permits. So this does not circumvent that process for them. This is merely a, 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 a planning approval, if you will, um, for this specific use. And also letting them know that, you know, the project needs to be consistent with the US 41 overlay standards and the land development code as a whole. Um, these were conditions that were presented to the applicant. They were agreed to by the applicant. Uh, so staff and applicant are in agreement on the conditions. 
that are before you. And with that, if you have any questions or comments of staff, or like I said, we do have a representative for the applicant on the phone for you. Question? I got a edification. You want to go first, Bruce? Sure. I just want to. I think this is a good job. I think this is well located, well designed car wash, and for the first time, I think I can support a car wash. And I got an edification question, please, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. I want to learn a little bit more about the 41 corridor. Can you go back to that, please? I know it's way back at the beginning. I should have stopped you while we were on it already. That one work? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. So for those of you keeping score at home, if I'm coming south on Tamiami Trail and want to turn into, take a left on across Tamiami, take a left onto production, there's a left turn lane. Correct. And that makes sense because there's a lot of people living down production circle. There's that. Yeah, you, you have a back access to the mobile home park off of... Mobile home park, yes, okay. Yes, correct. RV park, mobile home, yes. Okay, so if I'm coming north on Tamiami, i got to go past the car wash before I get to a right turn lane to turn on the production circle. Not, not, not correct. There well, I, I'm, I'm coming to that. Okay. Before I come back into the back entrance of the car wash. I can also, coming north, I can also turn right on the production circle that doesn't have a right turn lane that I can see. Yeah, that's, we need to see a little bit further south. This, this one showed that intersection a little better. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have that picture in the... Uh... Speaking of edification, can you just maybe specifically what, what is the issue? I'm just wondering what it takes to get a right turn signal, right right turn lane. You mean a, a separate lane? Yeah. yeah. To get off of Tamiami before I make a right turn. Just wondering, just wondering what the what it would what it takes. Is it a trap? Is it a volume of traffic? Is it a? It, yeah, it's 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 going to be an F dot standard since it's their roadway based on uh, the intensity and volume of traffic that are going to be making that specific turn. So it helps that we've got a right turn lane further north, I would assume. I would a, assume so as, as well, a yes. traffic pressure release point. Oh, that makes sense, Barry, because that's that's to get into the RV park. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. where all the people are going. Yeah, that, that that makes sense up there, but down there, I don't know. It it, it wasn't something against the project. It was what determines when we get right and left turn lanes. Volume and intensity. That's a DOT issue, as you said. Correct. Not part of the 41 overlay. No, sir. Thank you. Any additional questions? Okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion <coughs> to approve the um, special exemption to allow a car wash facility on property located within the US 41 corridor overlay. Second that. Mr. Chairman, there there are a few members of the public. Oh, I don't know if there's any. They want to comment. I'm sorry. No public. We're asking if there's any public comment. <laughs> it's the mayor. Hey, yeah, Rick Steinmeier. Uh, there is no access off of 41 to this besides production circle. Is that right? There's no turning off a. Of there, there's a turn that further to the south. That, that's correct. They, they don't have direct access off of 41. Their access points are going to be off of production circle. Very good. That's important. Thank you. Oh, okay. Any other comments from, from the, the uh, public? All right. There's a motion on the floor. Very Seconded. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. On the grant of the special exemption. Mary, welcome. Are you ready for the next agenda? This, this, yes. We are now going to uh, hear Lake Michigan Credit Union Special Exemption. 
special exemption request to reestablish the drive through operation at an existing bank building on a property located within the commercial zone of the Benita Beach Road corridor overlay, pursuant to LDC section 4-898. Presenting for the city is Mary Cecil. Rizzo, good morning, Community Development. I'll just give a brief introduction. We do have the applicant here, so I will let them present. Ah. Okay. Uh, this is a special exception request for an existing bank building and an existing drive through at uh, 3987 Bonita Beach Road Southwest. Um, because the site has been vacant for more than six months, a drive through does require a special exception within the Bonita Beach Road corridor overlay. Uh, staff does recommend approval. The applicant does agree with the conditions, but I will let them go ahead and present their side. Just one quick question for my own edification. The, the reason we're here is because of the six-month hiatus, correct? The technicality, just like we had on West, on West Perry. Exactly. Okay, thank you. That's can, you can you address the thinking behind that? Sure. Wh so what, what would happen in six months that would make this have to come back before us or we come before us? some amount of time. Um, where if properties are vacant, then they do, do need to come into compliance with our codes. So in this case, the Bonita Beach Road overlay says um, that drive throughs do require a special exception. Again, if a site was vacant for more than a duration of time, in our case we said six months, then we would make them come into compliance with our current codes. So this one has been vacant for more than six months. It's been close to a few years. Therefore, we want them to come into compliance with the Benita Beach Road corridor overlay. Just to provide a period in case things change. Exactly. Um, so that sites like this, for example, in 2001 it was developed to this. So that it wasn't in the 2001 standard for the duration of time. Since it's been vacant, we'd like to bring it up to code. Is Thank this you. the old Colonial Bank years ago? Um, it's, it's been bank buildings before Colonial. I think it was Truist at one point, too. It, it was a bb and yeah, yes. Okay. It's definitely right. switched. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Stacy Hewitt with Banks Engineering. I believe we missed getting sworn in the applicant oh. team, so if you, you could please. <laughs> Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, we do have the applicant team here with us as well. We have Darmesh Bartel with Lake Michigan Credit Union. Um, we also have Brent Addison, the engineer for the project, and Greg Desario, the landscape architect. The site's located at 3987 Benita Beach Road Southwest. It's mm. approximately 0.8 acre, and it's at the southeast corner of Benita Beach Road Southwest and Vanderbilt Drive. <coughs> It is within the general commercial future land use category. And it is currently zoned commercial. There's three different zoning categories on it. And the northern half of the property is within the commercial zone of the Bonita Beach Road corridor overlay. All of the zoning districts and the commercial zone of the overlay do allow a uh, bank as a permitted use. Um, the existing bank building with the four drive-through lanes was built back in 1980 and had an addition in 2001. The Bonita Beach Road corridor overlay was adopted in 2019, which requires a special exception for the drive-through and also a special exception to exceed over 15% more than the required parking for the site. Um, Again, the land development code section requires existing non-conforming uses to come into um, compliance with the code after six months of being vacant. Otherwise, the use could have continued. Um, <clears throat> staff has uh, recommended approval. Um, Bonita Springs Fire Control and Rescue also reviewed the request and had no objections, and the email is attached to the staff report. Um, the applicant is in agreement with the conditions of approval, and um, I do adopt the staff report and attachments as past part of my testimony. Um, this is the special <coughs> exception site plan. Um, 
as part of development of the site, we will be removing um, a significant portion of parking along Bonita Beach Road, as well as some parking at the southern portion of the property and a parking space along Vanderbilt Drive. Um, there will be, we'll be removing almost half of the parking spaces um, to come further into compliance with the Benito Beach Road corridor overlay. Um, the, um, the parking that's removed on the south will be to provide for dry detention area on the site that doesn't exist today. And the request does provide additional green space, landscaping, and dry detention. Um, we also will be adding a public shaded amenity and seating area up at the northwest corner of the site and um, will comply with the bicycle and pedestrian conditions of approval. Um, there will also be enhanced signage, striping, stop bars, and directional arrows to um, enhance the site as well. Uh, this is the conceptual landscape plan. The shaded trees are what exist today. And this plan shows the um, plethora of additional landscaping that will be provided as part of the application. Um, um, the conditions of approval are attached and again staff and applicant are in agreement with them. These are conceptual renderings of um, just beautifying the building and bringing it more into compliance. This is an older version of the site plan, so there's a, a couple of nuances, um, differences, but the building is depicted in these. Um, the request does comply with the comprehensive plan. It's in the general commercial future land use designation, and um, we do comply with the uses in there as well as the height and the floor area ratio. It will be consistent with that policy. And it also furthers the transportation element um, with adjustments to the widths of the sidewalks and also the access on Bonita Beach will be reduced and the sidewalk enhanced in that area. Um, the, we do comply with the review criteria. Um, I could go through them each in, if you would like me to go through those. <laughs> Thank you, um, staff and applicant is in agreement um, and the team is available if you have any questions. That concludes your testimony. Unless you'd like me to go through any of the specific criteria uh, no, in no, the no, detail. No, no. Okay. Um, Mary, you. do you want to make a presentation as well or? Um, <clears throat> I don't need to go through everything unless you'd like me to, but there are a few points I'd just like to touch on very briefly. Please. Wouldn't mind. So as Mr. Thegon previously presented, there are certain auto-centric uses that do require the special exception within our major corridor overlay. Uh, so this is within the Bonita Beach Road corridor overlay and that does require a special exception for that drive-through. Again, the bank is a permitted use. We have, um, that's permitted by right and that's allowed to be there. Uh, Ms. Hewitt did mention that they are bringing the site closer into compliance with the Bonita Beach Road corridor overlay. They are providing those bike, bicycle and pedestrian facilities or the provision for them. And then um, the parking reduction request, they are removing 14 spaces. So we do find the remaining 15 spaces to be appropriate. That does require this hearing for them to be um, above the 15% of the required parking. Otherwise, yes, we do find their request to be appropriate for this location. We find that they satisfied all of the criteria as analyzed within the staff report, and they do um, agree with those conditions that we outlined. So if there are any other questions? The removal of the southern parking spaces, I think I heard, is so that it makes room for... Dry detention. Dry de retention area. Improvements. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you had me when you said removing asphalt. I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, 
uh, second thing is um, would staff it, during the development order process please review the turning movement off of Vanderbilt Road at the southern that feeds the southern parking lot absolutely because it, the a left turn out of that parking mm -hmm. lot looks like it's illegal mm -hmm. and a right turn into it you have a jog because of the whether it's striping or an island in the middle of the road I think it's an island the, the left turn into that parking lot is is difficult right. move. So we will make sure that so. those function correctly or they will not be that way. Uh, yeah. Good, because maybe the chance to fix is that, that, that situation. Yeah, it's it? been there forever. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. seems to be working, but yeah. it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll make sure it's, it's a tricky it's move. It is. Yeah, yeah. But, but full disclosure, I did it yesterday, and it's you almost have to turn back yeah. to get back into the to get into the southern entrance to the parking lot without a left turn lane. Yep. We will comply with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? No, sir. Any other comments? Public comment? All right. Seeing none. I think we will entertain a motion to approve the special exemption request to reestablish the drive through operation at the existing bank building. And they get a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. And no opposition? Sir, I didn't I did not hear Mr. Hershenson's voice uh, vote. Ben? <coughs> yes. <laughs> Are you in favor? Well, of approval of the applicant's request. Ben. Yes. Are you in favor of the applicant? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Then it makes it unanimous. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Motion for adjourned. What, do we have more comments? Well, you, I, I asked. You moved your public comment, so if there's any general public comment, and then you usually, you've asked for staff case But I asked the public case. comment, and nobody's commented. Case, case update. Oh, the case update. I wasn't here the last meeting, so you got to forgive me. Um, case update. Morning, Chairman, Zoning Board members, Jacqueline Genson for the record. Case update at your August public hearing, we had the Bayview Plan Development Amendment. It was heard by City Council uh, last meeting, and we did make a couple of tweaks to the indigenous vegetation condition, which we the board did know about. Um, and Council did go ahead and approve um, the amendment. This is the third time these people have come back, right? First we rejected it, then the city council overturned our rejection, and then Actually, the board it's did. the same idea, isn't it? The same with the, the Ritz-Carlton and the Weeks Fish Camp and that whole thing. Well, the zoning board, there were some members that had some concerns, so the vote was, um, I believe it was 4-2. On this one, yeah. but on the, Yeah, on the amendment, but yes, ultimately okay. city council did approve. I understand. All right, that's fine. It's just curious that it's the same one. Bayview, I always think of Bayview the one in Bonita, in Bonita Bay, the two buildings. So I got a little confused as I wasn't here, and I'm old. No problem. Okay. And, and then the November 14th, we got something tentative that might for the next month meeting or? We'll go ahead and pull a quorum if we do have a case that okay. is sufficient. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank everybody. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Second, second. <laughs>